welcome everybody to our lobby today. This lobby is about Professor David Miller, but it's also about much more than that. You don't have to agree with Professor Miller. The point is that we want to defend academic freedom. We have a number of speakers here today, many of them from the academic world, but others from other spheres of life who recognize the importance of supporting Professor David Miller and defending academic freedom. We'll also be reading various tributes from people who aren't able to be here today, but want to support this lobby. Before we move on to our first speaker, I want to read from you a quote that's been sent to us by Jewish Voice for Labour. And they have sent a message of support which says, the University of Bristol has come under huge pressure to sack one of its senior academics, Professor David Miller. The attack has concentrated on his public statements, which reinstate forcefully his analysis of the role and influence of Israel and of Zionism, its supportive political ideology. The demand for David Miller sacking has been substantially based on the IHRA working definition of anti-Semitism, a widely criticized document that should have no role in university governance. Undoubtedly, there are people who have been offended by what he has said, but in our view, there is no supporting evidence to suggest that Miller's views are motivated by anti-Semitism. And of course, there is no right not to be offended. Indeed, the freedom of expression of staff, of students, and of visiting speakers is expressly protected by law. For the university to cancel his job would be a truly extreme case of no platforming. Jewish Voice for Labour calls on the University of Bristol to resist calls to sack David Miller. I'm now going to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Ron Mendel, who's an academic. I'm here to speak about academic freedom, a fundamental principle of university life. As an academic, I could never envision going into a classroom without feeling free to express my views and to teach in a way that would stimulate discussion, if not debate. Likewise, the research I conducted had to be free of any supervision, any censorship. That's fundamental to academic freedom. What underpins academic freedom is what is at the core of university life. As academics, we're expected to challenge conventional wisdom, to come up with new ideas, to encourage people to think for themselves. That's so fundamental, and it can never be fully understood unless you actually are an academic or you are a student at university. But I found in doing some background reading for today's talk, a very amazing fact. There is no statutory right of academic freedom in this country. The University College Union, which I'm a member of, I used to be a member of the National Executive Committee, was branch secretary for 15 years at the University of Northampton. They conducted a study in 2017. They surveyed 2,300 yeah. academics. And what they found in that course of that study was a very chilling picture. 25% of academics felt they had less academic freedom now than they did when they were first hired. Universities were losing autonomy to basically function freely of government regulation. And even more disturbingly, 23% of academics felt they were being harassed, if not bullied, for expressing their views on controversial subjects. Now, in the case of David Miller, he's been held to account, so to speak, 
for making remarks which have been twisted out of shape and distorted and actually misrepresented, where he actually suggested that Israel was using Jewish societies at universities as a way to promote support for Israel. I think that is well established, and it's so is well established that the Israeli government has transgressed on Palestinian human rights now for decades. To accuse him of being anti-Semitic is conflating criticism, just criticism, of the Israeli government with prejudice against Jews. I'm happy to say that a week ago, 200 scholars, Jewish scholars from Israel, the UK, and the United States issued a declaration, it's called the Jerusalem Declaration, and that declaration distinguishes criticism of Israel from anti-Semitism and clears the way for activists to argue even for BDS and, and without being out alleged to be anti-Semitic. I want to conclude. We're here today to defend David Miller. But we're here also to defend the higher principles of academic and free expression. Even if we did not agree with David Miller, I would be here to defend his right to express his views. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Woohoo! Hey. Hey. So next we're going to hear from Tej Van Dahl who's going to read out an expression of solidarity from Ken Loach. Universities depend on freedom within the law to challenge all ideologies and political movements. Professor Miller is renowned and respected for his, for his rigorous analysis and considered judgments. His voice is important. All are free to challenge his opinions, but none should advocate their suppression. Everyone who cherishes free speech should stand with David Miller. Next, we're going to hear from Dr. Eldin Farney, who is a colleague of Dr. David Miller. He's a senior lecturer in policy studies in the same department as David. So, welcome, Eldin. Um, well, I'm not going to be as eloquent as either of the last, uh, the last two speakers although I might be about as, as brief as the last one. I'm uh, a colleague of David. I work in the School for Policy Studies in the Centre for the Study of Poverty and Social Justice. And uh, as other speakers have said, you, you don't have to agree with uh, Professor Miller's work in order to support his right to free speech. But in fact, the work that Professor Miller does is world leading and is of fundamental importance in, in tackling and challenging the further progress of neoliberal ideas around the world. So his work explores the role of settler colonialism in spreading uh, a radical neoliberal agenda, one that has harmed uh, people in the global north and the global south, and one that is advanced uh, most vociferously by countries uh, including the state of Israel. People need the right to tell the truth about that. Academics need the freedom in order to research topics like that, in order to promote human well-being and social progress. And the university unfortunately uh, has decided to adopt a definition of anti-Semitism, the IHRA definition, which uh, according to that definition, effectively any uh, serious criticism of the State of Israel is constructed not only as anti-Zionism, but as anti-Semitism. And that, uh, of course, cr creates a problem for, for, for those of us who have been critical of, of the, the State of Israel, its treatment of the, the Palestinian people, and its role in, in the wider uh, progressive and neoliberal ideology around the world. So it's fundamentally important that we all support the academic right to uh, free speech. Obviously there are many things about this case that we can't uh, discuss publicly, but I think it's disappointing that the university hasn't been more vociferous in defending the right of its staff to tell the truth as they see it. And I, I hope that we can all uh, support the right of Professor David Miller to continue the, the critical work that he's doing here at Bristol. Thank you all for coming.
Next, we're going to have a solidarity statement read by Rita Kangiolossi from Professor Moshe Makova. Thank you, thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you very much. Defend David Miller is academic freedom. David Miller had been targeted by the British establishment and the Zionist lobby as part of the ongoing campaign designed to stifle the opposition to the Zionist colonialization project and Israeli settler status. He should be defended by all those who value freedom of speech, in particular, in particularly academic freedom. Moshe Mashova. Our next speaker has travelled all the way from Sheffield, Tina Verkman from Labour Against the Witch Hunt. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, comrade. Um, I want to start by saying we're here to support David Miller, of course we are. But we have to be very clear, this is not actually about David Miller, is it? It's about something far, far more dangerous and serious than that. This is a, a whole widespread attack on free speech, academic freedom, free, the right to protest. They're all going hand in hand and are being uh, organized by an increasingly authoritarian government. Um, this is also not about Jewish students feeling unsafe about what uh, David Miller has said or hasn't said. That's, I think that's actually nonsense. I used to be a student and I could really well handle arguments and disagreeing with people, etc. Uh, and, and I presume most students at Bristol University can actually manage that as well. Uh, and it's not students of Professor Miller's who've complained against them. We should be clear about that. So this is about brutal attacks on free speech in Palestine uh, uh, and academic freedom especially on the subject of Palestine and Israel. This is why we set up the uh, Labour campaign for free speech and helped to organize this protest. These attacks, for, to a large degree, are actually a response uh, to the uh, success of the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement, which has spread across the globe and which criticizes Israel uh, and has become a real headache for the governments of Israel and the US, of course. And they're also these attacks are response to what happened in 2015. Do you remember what happened in 2015? When all our hopes went through the roof and a certain Jeremy Corbyn was elected leader of the Labour Party, an anti-imperialist, an anti-war activist, who, was, who made it clear he will not follow you know, the government into a war on Iraq or any other military adventures in, in, in the Middle East. He was a serious headache. He was presenting a serious headache to the establishment in Britain as well as uh, abroad in the US and, and, and Israel. The Israeli government and its supporters in Britain put an immense amount of pressure and money and power behind uh, an incredibly successful campaign to discredit Jeremy Corbyn and anybody who supports Palestine. The most, this was the most devastating and the most devastatingly successful smear campaign in recent history, I believe. Dozens, hundreds of anti-racists were smeared as racists, they were smeared as anti-Semites, had their livelihoods uh, really threatened, a number of people have lost their jobs for speaking out against Israel, their reputations shattered, their political careers ruined, etc., you name it. Um, because their, their, their pro-Palestinian views were smeared as being anti-Semitic. And as the, the speaker before me said, the IRA misdefinition of anti-Semitism has been absolutely crucial in this context. We're now seeing every university that refuses to uh, adopt it being threatened with defunding by the government. This is really, really serious. Um, even its author, Kenneth Stern, has said that this, this definition or misdefinition of, of anti-Semitism has been misused and has been used to, to freeze uh, to, to chill free speech, as he put it, and that is very serious. It does conflate anti-Semitism with anti-Zionism. Criticism of Israel is labeled anti-Semitic, and that is a really big problem. In the US, uh, you would have seen there's a, a threats now against charities that speak up on Palestine are being labeled anti-Semitic, including the really revolutionary Oxfam charity is labeled anti-Semitic and threatened with defunding, etc. This is a very serious attack. So the campaign against David Miller has to be seen firmly in this international context. He's an important test case, actually. If, he's, uh, if he loses his job, it could literally open the floodgates to many more academics. Other people have already lost their jobs. He's not the first. He wouldn't be the first. 
but this is the first um, attempt to get rid of an academic and that has really serious implications for academic uh, freedom. And if we look at what he actually said, just like Ken Livingston, he's actually being criticized and hounded for something which is pretty much true. Remember Ken Livingston uh, mentioned the historic fa fact that Zionists in Germany cooperated with the early Nazi movement in the 30s to get Jews to Palestine. This is true. There's historic evidence, masses of it, but it's not allowed to say these historic facts at the moment. So David Miller also, he, he merely stated pretty unexciting and obvious fact that JSOX and the Union of Jewish Students are acting in support of the Israeli government. It's not a secret, that's why they exist. That's the point of their existence. In their constitution, it states, their core values include inspiring Jews, Jewish students to make an enduring commitment to Israel. The Al Jazeera documentary, The Lobby, has shown that the Israeli government helps to fund the Union of Jewish Students. So it's not a secret, actually. Um, we should note in this context that the, the JSOX and Union of Jewish, Jewish Students do not represent all Jewish students. They probably don't even represent a minority of Jewish students, even though, if they pretend to. But there are thousands of secular and non-Zionist and even anti-Zionist Jews and Jewish students who are outraged about the, the crimes that are being committed by the Israeli government against the Palestinians. And it's just like in wider society, the Board of Deputies does not represent Jews in Britain. They keep saying it, it's not true. There are thousands, tens of thousands, anti-Zionist Jews who stand in, 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 in solidarity with the Palestinians and criticize the Israeli government. And of course, many, many supporters of David uh, Miller are Jewish and are, many of his students are, are Jewish and support him. There's a, a letters of support on his website and I urge you to, to, to check it out. So the attacks on David Miller and, and academic freedom bring a danger which I think is the most serious actually and which we've noticed when putting together this rally. It's the danger of self-censorship and that's of course what this is all about, to get people to shut their mouth, shut your mouth about Palestine, shut your mouth about what's going on in the Middle East and just keep quiet, you know, it'll be okay, you'll keep your job, we'll keep it quiet, etc. That's why we're here today. We will not be silenced. We refuse to let anti-Palestine campaigners smeared as anti-Semites. We refuse to let somebody like David Miller stand by himself. We're in solidarity with David Miller and we're in solidarity with Palestine. Thank you. Now Tej is coming back. I, I, I didn't say that Tej is actually from the Palestine Solidarity Campaign. And Tej is going to read an expression of solidarity from Roger Waters. Roger says, the Israeli lobby and its supporters in certain factions of Keir Starmer's Blairite apology for a Labour Party use false accusations of anti-Semitism as its only defence of Israel's illegal, racist, apartheid policies. That would be laughable were it not so insidious and effective. David Miller, like many other good men and women who Keir Starmer has purged from the Labour Party, are the lifeblood of a real labor movement that believes in human rights, a party that must be free from censorship and foreign influence. Support David Miller and the rest of the good and true. The labor movement depends on it. Hi, um, many of you will recognize me, but uh, officially I'm Dr. Roland I, and I have a PhD in physics, and I never thought that years or a lifetime later it would come in useful as a as a quick little topic for a, a short speech obviously i'm here because i feel it's absolutely essential to support academic freedom and this is why my research was within a well-established field of nuclear medicine imaging and i was designing equipment to improve that process but what i designed failed to perform in the expected manner so my PhD research then became a radical critique of the ruling paradigm being used in that field. Had I lived in the time, say, of Galileo, it's no exaggeration to say I might have been branded a heretic and burnt at the stake. As indeed nearly happened to Galileo. Uh, because I was challenging the ruling paradigm, and that's what's happening here. So these current attacks on academic freedom 
if I was researching in more controversial fields of politics or social science, I would be afraid of the modern day equivalent. Academic freedom is precious. Established ideas must be constantly open to challenge and review. We do need free debate. Of course, that debate must be respectful and free from prejudice, etc. Indeed, that is an essential part of that process. But if we lose academic freedom, then our society is sliding into a dictatorship. So I'm proud to support this campaign for David Miller, as are the rest of us. Thank you very much. Now Rita is coming back, and Rita is going to read um, a solidarity statement from Alexei Sale. A healthy society is one where people can speak the truth even about uncomfortable subjects. No one should lose their job for telling the truth. I want to express my support and in solidarity with David Miller. Our next speaker is Peter Furman, and Peter's come from the Labour Representation Committee, <laughs> and you've travelled from London. Brighton, is it? Oh, Pete's travelled from London today. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Esther. Uh, yeah, I'm here to bring solidarity from the Labour Representation Committee with David Miller. And while I'm about it, solidarity with all those Bristolians attacked or arrested by the police in the last while. Um, and I should say, personally, I've been suspended by the Labour Party for the double crime of, as chair, allowing people to discuss whatever they want and uh, allegations of anti-Semitism. Um, the attack on David Miller and the calls for him to be sacked are part, very much part of an international attempt to demonise all those who speak out against the tribes of Israel and, and in support of the Palestinians. While well, real anti-Semites, those haters of Jews, are welcomed if they support Israel, then, then those like David Miller who challenge the legitimacy of a political ideology of Zionism are wrongly accused of racism. These attacks are happening here in universities, in local councils, in our political parties. We have a hypocritical government that says it wants to champion free speech in universities at the same time as demanding that universities adopt the IHRA, which has been mentioned several times, um, which closes down that free speech, closes down that discussion. Um, and, sorry. Um, instead of being, what we found often is that instead of being willing to discuss the issues of Israel-Palestine, like the murders in the Gaza Strip by Israeli snipers, we instead you get accused of anti-Semitism, you close down discussion and call people racists instead. The LRC stands with those resisting these attacks and opposes the sacking of David Miller, defending academic freedom defense of our right to challenge the crimes of Israel. Solidarity. So now Ted is coming back to read a solidarity statement from one of his favorite authors, Jonathan Cook. In case people haven't heard of Jonathan Cook, um, you should really follow his blog. Um, incredible journalist based in Nazareth. Uh, very powerful, insightful um, take on uh, lots of issues. So Jonathan Cook says, the Israel lobby has made a test case of Professor David Miller. They hope to send a chilling message to other academics that there will be a heavy price to pay for anyone who tries to scrutinize their efforts to stifle debate about Israel. If they win, all of us who value a free, informed society will be the losers. Our next speaker, Joseph, Joseph O'Neill, are you here? Is speaking for Interfaith for Palestine. Thank you, Joseph. And you've come over from Wales, haven't you? Good afternoon. Um, it's a pleasure to be here from Wales, Swansea in Wild West Wales. Um, 
it's all about free speech. Uh, Adolf Hitler in the 1930s tried to get rid of free speech. It was a disaster. And we mustn't get rid of free speech in this country. They're coming from Miller, and the next person they'll be coming from is you, and you, and you. And soon nobody in this country will be allowed to mention the P word, Palestine. Our interfaith for um, Palestine group, we fully support Professor Miller. We pray for Professor Miller. Nobody can stop us praying for him. There's still no law against that yet. We think about him, we reflect about him, we speak about him, and we have invited him to speak at our weekly Zoom meeting. And nobody can stop us talking about Palestine every week in an interfaith context amongst moderate Jews, Muslims, and Christians. So full support for Professor Miller from Interfaith for Palestine UK. Thank you. So our final solidarity statement to be read by Rita is from Chris Williamson. David Miller is a esteemed academic who has made an invaluable contribution in highlighting Islamophobia, redesigning Zionist ideology and explaining the interrelationship between state and corporate power. And uh, they also wanted to add to add, I don't know, some, some of you here are not from Bristol. Um, we have the Palestine Museum and Culture Center in Bristol, but, um, in Broad Street, which is not very far from here, about 10 minutes walk. And we are closed now, but put it on my next time you come here. Thank you. <laughs> Our next speaker was up at the crack of dawn and has traveled all the way from Brighton. She was a student at the University of Bristol. Welcome, Sandy Kennedy. Thank you, good afternoon. I would like to just go back to the Labour Party conference of 2019, when the conference supported an ethical foreign policy. And one of those policies related to Palestine. And I would like to speak about a woman who said to me, I am an Israeli, I am Jewish. My parents were pioneers. My grandparents died in the Holocaust. But the world should know what Israel is doing now is wrong. That woman would be called a bad Jew here, a self-hating Jew because the IHR definition has effectively divided the Jewish community. That ethical voice would have earned her suspension from the Labour Party now. And that is truly a tragic situation. And now I have a special message for those Jewish students at Bristol who consider themselves to be unsafe. Let me take you back to Yad Vashem. There's a picture of a little boy He's about four. He's rolling up his arm to show that he has been branded. It's about 1943. The little boy is trying to look very brave, as little boys of four sometimes do. And now I'm going to take you to another little boy, two years ago in Hebron, trying to go through one of the checkpoints. Believe me, the checkpoints are not the turnstiles that get you into the lavatory. The checkpoints are cruel iron gates with soldiers on the other side with guns. That little boy is holding the hand of his little sister. He too is trying to be very brave. Now, Jewish students in Bristol, that is being unsafe. Unsafe is being in the suits with the settlers throwing their trash cans over you. Unsafe is being the students who try to stand up in Israel for what is right. Being unsafe is for the soldiers that break the silence. That is unsafe. Thank you. So 
I'm just to, going to summarise now and then Tony Gosling, who's a local reporter and an investigative journalist, um, wants to say a few words. So just to remind you, this lobby is about Professor David Miller, but as you've heard, it's about much more than that and you don't have to agree with him. We want to defend academic freedom. These attacks on academic freedom are part of a pattern of restrictions advancing in society, including attacks on freedom of speech and freedom to assemble and to protest. David Miller is under threat of suspension because he's expressed views that other people disagree with. Other academics may be targeted and possibly fired if David is subject to disciplinary action. It won't take much of this, as we've heard, to persuade academics to, to stop speaking out for fear of losing their careers. We say that Professor Miller must be free to teach, publish and research. Students must be free to debate, learn and disagree. Academic freedom is essential to extending knowledge and understanding and fostering critical thinking for staff and for students. The freedom to research, debate and disagree is essential to learning but also to democracy. This assault on academic freedom is part of a wider attack on our democratic freedoms. We see widespread attempts to clamp down on free speech. We see Thank people you. threatened and no platform because people think they have views with which they disagree and people refuse to debate them. This cancel culture ironically seems to thrive in the academy where debate is key to learning. In the Labour Party there have been widespread suspensions of elected officers. We'll hear from one of those in a moment because those officers allow debate of topics that have been forbidden by the bureaucracy. And now we have the Police Crime Sentencing and Courts Bill where causing serious annoyance can be punished with up to 10 years in jail. As my daughter said of protests causing annoyance, isn't that the point? Yes. So our lobby today is in the context of a pattern of onslaught on our democratic freedoms, academic freedoms, freedom of speech, and freedom to protest. To this end, we must act in solidarity to defend Professor David Miller. Yay! And Hedley um, Bashforth, um, the suspended chair of Bristol North West CLP, has just turned up, so he's going to say a few words <laughs> to us. Thanks, Esther. And, um, I'm here representing nobody in particular, although I am a member of the University and College Union, and one thing that struck me about this this particular protest is where are the UCU banners? And if you are a member of the UCU, yeah. please put pressure on your branch committees to get behind David Miller. I used to work with David when he was at Bath University, and I'll tell you this, that David's courses were more or less the same as the ones he teaches now. I was the director of studies on the programmes that he taught. Never one complaint from any students on his courses. Never one complaint. In fact, quite the opposite. Um, what's changed is the campaign against people like David who are speaking out against Zionism and against the terrors of Zionism uh, that have been inflicted on the, Palest on the Palestinian people, as, as Sandy's described very, uh, very well. Uh, the only other thing I'd say is that Bristol's got a, a proud tradition of opposing uh, forms of oppression in other countries. And it's 50 years ago that the Stop the Tour campaign in Bristol against the apartheid rugby team uh, stopped the game uh, up, at Memorial, up at Memorial Ground in Bristol <coughs> and that tradition is one of opposing forms of politics and states that are based on a religious or a racial principle. That's what we're fighting against uh, by backing David Miller and I'm calling you to continue to back David in his fight to keep his job. Finally, one of our local investigative journalists, Tony Gosling, on a few words about subversion in Bristol, I think, or not as the case may be. Okay, last but hopefully not least and fairly short, but uh, 
the reason I came down here is not just to report on this event, which I think is a very important event. And, you know, David, we've had on the radio here in Bristol several times. The discussion about anti-Semitism and Israel and rights and wrongs of it have been happening on the airwaves in Bristol, but not so much anywhere really else but on, on the program that I was doing on the community radio. I'm a, trained by the BBC many years ago and we have been discussing this probably for the last five years regularly. Every three or four weeks something comes up and we get guests on to discuss. Uh, at the beginning of the pandemic as an excuse our program was dropped by uh, the station manager Pat Hart uh, who happens to be a close friend of the Blairite Mayor of Bristol and this is one of the reasons I'm you know, frustrated to see the Labour Party traditionally has supported this cause, but the Labour leaders in Bristol, where are they now? Where are they? Let's look at what happened uh, in the in the run-up to the 2017 election. The Labour Party itself was being undermined totally from inside, and people campaigning, including a certain Mr Mandelson, and powerful people, to make sure that Jeremy Corbyn wasn't elected. Um, I think, for me, what does the word Zionism really mean? And I think there's a, a big attempt, as we saw with the Ken Livingston case, to stop people actually understanding what's going on, particularly understanding history, as we heard from a lady from La Labour Against the Witch Hunt. They don't want people to understand this subject, and I do. The word Zion means what? It means the city of God. And I think we need to be holding Jerusalem and the political leaders in Jerusalem to account to make it a real city of God and not a fake, not a fake and a fraud city of God. And that's all I've got to say. You can still hear us on the, the internet every week, every Friday at thisweek.org.uk. And uh, I just hope that, uh, that we, we make sure that a, a bad example is not set here in Bristol. I very much hope it isn't to the rest of the world. Support. David Miller! Thank you so much, Tony. Uh, thank you all. We're going to have a little walk now. We're going to walk down to the Vice Chancellor's office, but before that, we're going to have a socially distanced group photograph um, that we'll be able to use for posterity and to support David.